Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Magnum Gold Corp, MGI and the TSX Venture Exchange. A 2015 drill program on the LH property intersected several high-grade gold intersections, including 11 meters of 20.66 grams per ton gold. Additional drill targets on the LH property have been identified by a 2018 drone airborne magnetic survey to further evaluate a pyrotite enriched gold bearing system. Please visit our website at magnumgoldcorp.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Sharon Noble, Director of the BC Coalition to Stop Smart Meters. Welcome back to the show, Sharon. Thank you very much, Jim. Sharon, were you happy of the audit done on BC Smart Meters? No, of course not. Um, an audit was done of the entire smart meter program to date. And basically, the comment that was given is that it was very poorly managed. They acknowledged that the smart meter um, design and the program itself um, had very few objectives and little long-term strategy. Now, that's obvious from many of the things that we've seen and experienced. We know that BC Hydro um, gave incorrect or, or false information. I don't know whether they knew it at the time or not, but they've been giving incorrect information about the cost effectiveness of the program. Uh, they denied uh, any knowledge about the fact that the lifespan of the smart meters is only five to seven years instead of the 20 that they profess. Uh, none of this was covered in the audit. Um, we know that the program has been mismanaged because of the way it was implemented. People have been threatened. People have been coerced. They've been forced to do things that they don't want to do without any choice. This audit basically um, has summarized the fact that there is no long-term strategy to realize any potential investment from smart meters. What does that tell you? That tells you that right from the very beginning, there was no oversight. Remember how this happened, Jim. In 2010, the Liberals forced through a program called the Clean Energy Act in which they said that there would be smart meters and there would be Site C, but there would be no oversight. There, This is a bad precedent, and the audit didn't address that. They left that alone entirely. Neither did they speak to the fact that financially there has been no financial oversight of this program, including the millions and millions, I think close to $50 million in extortion fees that were extracted under the false premise that they needed this, that Hydro needed this to be able to read the meters of people who were opting out. Now, we all know that the cost for reading meters was already in our rates. And we also know that meter readers are all still working because the smart meters in, in like 50,000 smart meters still aren't working. So why all this money was extracted from people who didn't want a smart meter, it's never been accounted for, and we don't know what the additional costs were that supposedly were incurred. None of this was included in the audit. I think it's high time that the public demand that there be an independent audit. Let's find out what was going on. Let's find out if, in fact, there are any benefits to be had, because we sure as heck haven't seen any. And if based upon the information from many other places that have had smart meters longer than, than BC has, we won't see any benefits. And it's a spiral downward of into a bottomless pit of costs. The smart meters are, are simple little breakable computers that need to be upgraded constantly, that need to be replaced regularly. And this is in addition to all of the other costs that have been incurred. How much money has been spent? We've never heard this. To pay for fires, to pay for insurance claims. Uh, from fires, 
uh, lawsuits due to privacy invasion. No, I'm not happy with the audit. It's a beginning, but it sure missed a lot of other things that it should have looked at. Well, it looks like uh, the BC Liberal po- government, uh, BC Liberal government, when it was in power, didn't like oversight over anything. Because take a look at the scandal that's happening at the legislature and the outrageous spending that's alleged to have happened there. Yep. And look at Site C. There was a major article um, as well recently that billions of dollars in contracts for Site C were handed out and may still be handed out on a no-bid contract basis. Who on earth? I mean, I don't know about you, Jim, when, but when I do renovations at my home, I bring in two or three different people and I get competing bids. They didn't do this with Site C? Did they do this with the smart meter program too? My guess is, yeah, because both of these programs under the Clean Energy Act were done without any oversight by the BC Utilities Commission. And it's the BC Utilities Commission that has oversight responsibility for the way money is spent by BC Hydro. So if they're doing it with Site C... What else are they doing it with? Well, whenever you do something like this, it sounds like they've cleared the decks to allow corruption without any investigation. Yep. And if you look, I don't know if you've ever looked at the Ty E articles that were written by Will McMartin back in April, March, that time frame, maybe February of 2011. In the Ty E, Will McMartin wrote about the smart meter funding and how many of the liberal friends and buddies and retired politicians were connected with ITRON and Corex. It was corrupt from day one, and Will McMartin identified it. And yet, I never heard anybody make a hoot about it. I never heard uh, John Horgan, when he was in opposition, talk about it. So you have to wonder how deep this corruption runs. Yeah, and is it still ongoing? How many billions of dollars have been spent irresponsibly? We're going to be paying for these things for years. I mean, isn't it bad enough that we're endangering people's health and privacy and we're ruining the environment with Site C? I guess not. Anything for a profit. We'll have more with Sharon Noble right after this. MGX Minerals is revolutionizing the new energy economy with patented lithium extraction technology replacing traditional solar evaporation using low-cost, low-energy nanofiltration. The first system of this paradigm shift technology is currently being commissioned. MGX Minerals trades on the CSE, symbol XMG, the OTCQB, symbol MGXMF, and Frankfurt, symbol 1MG. For more information, visit our website, mgxminerals.com. I'm Kelly Jennings, CEO of PowerVan Solutions. PowerVan is a cloud-based provider of auction, inventory, and finance solutions that make buying, selling, and financing vehicles more efficient. PowerVan Solutions trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol PBX and on the OTCQB symbol PWWBF and on Frankfurt symbol 1ZV. For more information, please visit us at PowerVanSolutions.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sharon Noble. Sharon, has the BC government reacted to any of these reports questioning the safety of Wi-Fi and microwave radiation? Not once. Dr. Bonnie Henry is just like um, Dr. Kendall was before her. People have been sending her hundreds of reports. Recently, I know 150 reports were sent to her. Recent reports showing how dangerous it is for children to be exposed to Wi-Fi in schools. And the only response anyone ever gets, and not many people get any response at all, my letters have been ignored, the response is that her experts at the BC Center for Disease Control are reviewing the science, and they think that it's fine that precautionary measures are not needed. We've asked over and over, what experts are there? There is nobody at the BC Center for for Disease Control that has any expertise in the relevant subjects. Nobody knows about microwave radiation. No one knows about the biological effects of exposure to wireless radiation. There's nobody there with the qualifications. Yet we're sending her 
information from world-renowned experts on peer-reviewed studies that other countries are taking very seriously. Several countries are banning Wi-Fi from schools entirely. Not Bonnie Henry, not this province. They won't do a thing. Recently, in Florence, a court of Florence, Italy, um, ruled that a school had to be hardwired for the sake of uh, saving and protecting children who were sensitive to microwave radiation. Yet here in British Columbia, children who suffer migraines, nosebleeds, all sorts of health problems because of exposure to Wi-Fi are ignored. All we're asking for is for her to look at the studies and make an intelligent decision. She wrote a report um, this month, released a report on the health of British Columbians. It's her annual report. And she says that the health is good in many, by many acceptable standards regarding preventable diseases from such things as smoking. Not one word about Wi-Fi in schools. Not one word about cell phone use. Nothing about any of these studies that have been sent to her. It's highly irresponsible of her. And, you know, when you see um, countries like Italy that recently came out after the um, NTP study, the National Toxicology Project, the $25 million 10-year study that said exposure to cell phones is carcinogenic. There was no qualms about it. And this was peer-reviewed by many, many experts. And even the American Cancer Society, which you know is very hesitant to say anything bad about wireless radiation, said that this was a major, major study that really had to be taken seriously, and it was a game-changer, It was their term. As a result the- of this study, Italy is now saying that everyone must be made aware of the dangers of using cell phones. Not one from body hand, not one word on her website, not one word on the uh, Cancer Society's website, nothing. It's as if, and Health Canada's just as bad. Health Canada refuses to acknowledge any of these studies. And if you look at Bonnie Henry's website, the Cancer Society's website, or Health Canada's website, looking for an answer, you will go away assured that there's no problem. Because they say such things as, even though there have been some studies showing some evidence of harm, there's no evidence showing it conclusively. You know, the precautionary principle doesn't wait for conclusive evidence. The precautionary principle that Bonnie Henry is supposed to support and implement says when there is a chance of harm before it is concluded that it is harmful, must be um, the, the precautionary principle must be implemented to prevent harm from occurring. You don't wait until people start dying on your doorstep before you start taking action. But this isn't good enough for Health Canada, and it's obviously not good enough for Bonnie Henry. Can government officials be sued for giving you bad advice like that? I don't know, Jim, and I wish I knew. I think that there are a lot of protections against this sort of thing. Uh, what I'm looking into is school officials, for instance, school trustees. School trustees take an oath to protect the children and to make the best decisions for teachers and children. And they have director's insurance that protect them from their decisions if they are acting in good faith. But when school officials are given studies showing that Wi-Fi is dangerous for children, yet they do nothing, and when there is a safe alternative, a better alternative in many ways, through use of fiber optic cable, to do the same thing, and they refuse to do it, I do believe those people could be sued individually because their director's insurance is void if they're not acting in good faith. I think people should start looking into this seriously because if these people are acting willfully negligent 
if they are not doing their jobs. And a public health doctor, which is what Body Henry is, takes an oath not to do harm. Yet she is allowing harm to be done by doing nothing. I don't know, Jim. I, it's a very good question. And if anybody has the answer, I sure wish they'd let me know. Could the B.C. government be compromised because it could open negotiations again to rename uh, B.C. Place Stadium? And, of course, uh, the ones most likely to be talked to are the big telecoms, Rogers, Shaw, Bell, the ones that have all the cell phones. There's a real conflict of interest. You know, they're not going to do anything to upset the, the people who, who, you know, give them money, give them support. You know, many politicians get money, you know, for their elections from the telecoms. Many of the um, major studies that they defer to that are not independent, that are funded by the telecoms, are being used to justify their stance. And yeah, if places, you know, are being built, sure, there's a real compromise. Look at the Cancer Society. They get money. They get money from the telecoms. They've got people like Mary McBride, the person who um, falsely, uh, who allowed people to believe that she was a doctor of some sort, an MD or a PhD for years. She, she's been supported by the telecoms. You know, this is a real conflict of interest. And people like James McNamee, who is head of the Radiation Research Area in Health Canada, he, he works with and for Mo- Motorola. That's where he does his, um, he does quote his research, his five day rat studies that he say, he, he claims are just as good and significant as a 10 year study done by the Ramazzini Institute in Italy. You can see the result of the conflicts of interest are major in all fields, whether it's, you know, pesticides or GMOs or wireless radi- radiation. We can't trust any of the decisions if they're funded by the industries. We'll have more. We're Sharon Noble right after this. Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp, RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp is a Canadian-based mineral exploration project generator. The company currently holds multiple property interests in Ontario with joint venture partners and is seeking further joint venture partners for other drill-ready properties in our portfolio. For more information, please visit our website at rmroyalty.com or call me at 604-922-2030. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sharon Noble. Sharon, you have some serious concerns about where they're putting 5G antennas. Yes. Yes, I do. Um, As I've spoken before, the 5G antennas are going to be the microcells are being put outside homes. Um, they're just a few feet in some cases from bedroom windows where children could be sleeping. Uh, we've learned recently they're starting, they're looking, in, for instance, in the UK at ways to hide them. They're putting them in manhole covers so that people walking over the manhole covers or children playing on the manhole covers are going to be irradiated. They're going to be in very, very close contact. There are a lot of concerns about 5G in all of its various forms. And another form that I'm very concerned about are the satellites. Um, Elon Musk, you know, of Tesla is funding and supporting the, um, putting up to 20,000 satellites in low orbit around the world so that 5G can be sent to every place on Earth. There won't be a, a spot where people and animals and wildlife and, and plants are not being irradiated. And there's so many experts who are warning how dangerous this is. There's no reason for it. Do we really need to be able to download movies that so quickly that justifies having milli waves shot at, at us all day long? And we won't be able to escape it. 
you can go in your house, I guess, if you've got a, a you know, good, good solid house, you know, the milliways will have trouble going through, but they're going to be putting them up with a raid fa- phased array antenna, which can penetrate, you know, most materials. It's going to be very, very difficult to escape these things. Are we seeing more incidents of brain cancer that used to be rare? Yeah. In fact, uh, just this week, uh, a former MP, Paul De- De- DeWar, I think is his name, um, died at age 56. I've been keeping a, a list of people dying from glioblastomas, and it's a pretty extensive list, and this is only when I hear about it in the media. Um, the studies are showing that uh, younger people are getting glioblastomas than, than ever before and other types of brain cancer. Recently, I, I circulated a study saying that um, shortly cancer is going to be surpassing heart disease as the main cause of death. Now, Cancer Society will tell you, and it's correct, that the rate of cancer is going down. But the rate of cancers, all cancers are not going down. The total rate is going down primarily because lung cancer and colon cancers are going down because of additional screening and people aren't smoking anymore. But brain cancers are increasing. I'm trying to get the statistics, um, get the study used. I haven't been able to get it yet. But many um, experts report that children and people under age 35 um, see huge rates of increase. And it's only going to get worse. Those are the people who've been exposed to microwave radiation uh, since before they were born. And um, the studies, such as the Ramazzini Institute, show that exposure to even very, very low levels of microwave radiation can cause glioblastomas, even if you're not using a cell phone. Any microwave radiation can cause cancers of the brain and other parts of your body. Sharon, what's your latest concern about Huawei, the Chinese uh, big cell phone giant? Lots, lots of concerns. Um, Huawei, as you know from our previous discussions, Jim, has been identified by many study by many countries as a, a potential uh, Chinese infiltrator. Um, China has close ties with every corporation the government does and Huawei is the producer of more equipment such as cell phones and transmitters that are used in our our grid especially the 5G grid that TELUS is developing than just about any other country and they are being banned from many countries like Australia and the UK and the U.S. Is, is putting out warnings. They're going to start withdrawing. This is what I've been told. I haven't, I don't know for sure that it started, but I was told that they're going to start withdrawing some of their Huawei equipment. Um, in Canada, we're proliferating it. In fact, Huawei has just started, um, plans to implement internet service in Laklahash in British Columbia. I don't know, I've been trying to find out, is Huawei even licensed to provide Internet service? CRTC licenses and regulates telecoms who provide Internet service. On what Huawei, or however it's pronounced, is not on their list. How can they be providing Internet service in British Columbia and starting to put other invasive technology across our province like this. Don't our MPs, don't our MLAs care? I mean, we're sending them this information, and the only MP I've heard from, the only politician period that I've heard from, is Elizabeth May. She is very concerned. I've been sending her articles, and she is um, trying to uh, get other federal uh, MPs and officials as concerned as she is, uh, but it's a lo- it's a slow haul because nobody seems to care. They seem to feel, in fact, uh, one of the officials I can't remember what branch she was in said that there could be uh, 
profit. Uh, you know, the companies could um, lose money if they didn't use Huawei equipment or if they had to go in and replace it. How important is our privacy and how important is our cybersecurity? This Huawei, if it invades the infrastructure, as we believe it already has, would have the power to shut off our grids, our electrical grids, our water, our heating. Everything that we depend upon and use every day is dependent upon the power grid, the telecommunications grid now, the Internet of Things is connected to just about everything. It's going to be connected to our computers, to every smart device, whether it's your telephone or whether it's your television or whether it's your thermostat. As soon as this Internet of Things and 5G gets going, everything is going to be interconnected. And Huawei is so involved in this in British Columbia that we can't avoid it. If, if they decide that they're going to hack something, if they're going to decide that they're going to do a, an attack on Canada, for instance, for holding their vice president um, at bay for the United States, they could attack us. And we've got absolutely no way to defend ourselves. In fact, one of the uh, people in Canadian cyber security has said that there is no way to protect us so far that's been developed for 5G that it's been in, um, there is some protection for uh, 3G and maybe 4G, but there's nothing with regard to 5G that would, as far as the cybersecurity protections, we're completely vulnerable. And I think that we, we need to raise the hue and cry, all of us as individuals, because no one's listening to just me. No one's listening to the members of the coalition who are writing. We need to get more voices. And every day in the newspaper you can read about, you know, companies being hacked, governments being hacked. In fact, yesterday there was just an article about uh, a major Norwegian hack. They're hacking all over the world. And in many cases, in the U.S., for instance, um, the, the experts are warning that they seem to be feeling their way. They're doing small little hacks each day into the electrical grid, and they, the government experts believe it's just kind of feeling their way through in preparation to a major hack, shutting down the system. And the, U, the U.S. and Canada are connected at the hip on this. If, for instance, California, if the grid in California goes down, British Columbia will have major problems. This is the way the grid is being built. Across Canada and across the United States, we are all interconnected. And I think it's something that is just waiting to happen. This is what the CIA has warned. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And we've got to voice our concerns now. And I think home way is we're making a big mistake allowing it access to our Internet, for example, in a tiny town in British Columbia. We don't need it. Sharon, is there anywhere people can go to get more information about these issues? They most certainly can, Jim. My website is www.stopsmartmetersbc.com. Sharon, thank you so much for being on the show. As always, Jim, it's my pleasure. My guest has been Sharon Noble, Director of the BC Coalition to Stop Smart Meters. If you have any questions for Sharon or any for other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.